here. So let's welcome in Michael Raup, an entomology professor at the University of Maryland. Uh, professor, it is so great to see you again. First of all, am I saying it correctly? Is it Joro spiders? Yes, I think it's Joro spider, and these spiders are pretty darn big. They're not as big as this one, Nicole, maybe about as big as, a little bit smaller than Listen, my Michael, if, if the spiders, spiders were as big as that, it would be, this interview would be over, and I've got to, I would have to get out of the country. Uh, all right, a study yeah, says too. that these spiders, which are native to Asia, were introduced yes. to North Georgia around 2010, so 14 years ago. Right. Why are yep. they potentially spreading now? Well, you know, with invasive species, Nicole, it often takes several years for them to kind of get adjusted for us to detect them. Usually they, they're in the first three or four or five years. They're kind of out in the woodwork under the radar. But once their populations begin to grow, and that's the circumstance right now down in the southeast, we begin to see more and more. They come in contact with humans. But in addition to this, recent scientific research will predict that these spiders will find abundant habitats all the way up the East Coast in parts of Western states as well. And they have a proclivity to disperse, as all spiders do. Uh, the dispersal seems to be in a more northward direction. And guess what? In 2023, we had about 12 identifications of Jaro spiders right here in Maryland about 10 miles from my home. I promise I did not bring them here, but they are seem to be poised to spread further up the, the Eastern seaboard. They really are beautiful looking at them. So, so Professor, take us through some of their characteristics. They, they kind of fly, they, they really actually balloon. You can talk about right. that. They're so vibrant, yep. they're venomous, sure. but humans are safe. Yeah. Well, the deal with this is if you recall Charlotte's Web, you know, Charlotte's spiderlings when it came time in the autumn. And this is true of many spiders, including our big orb weavers like this one. They'll let out a little strand of silk uh, as storm fronts approach. They get swept up into the air current where they will ride these jet streams for hundreds of miles till they finally drop out of the atmosphere. And at that point in time, if they can find a mate, they can simply um, establish a population. I think the other way they're spreading right now is probably with a human assist. They're good hitchhikers. And if we have an impregnated, impregnated female in a car or in an RV or an egg case, an egg mass, it travels from Georgia up here to Maryland. Somebody opens it up or they escape and boom, now we've got an infestation. So that's those are the two primary primary ways they spread. When you start talking egg sacs and uh, uh, yeah. well, these... the venom yeah, now here's the here's but listen, the I know they have to live like we all do. <laughs> of course they do. And they're beautiful spiders. The good news here is experts say the mouth parts are so puny they they simply can't pierce our skin. They're going to build very large webs, bigger than a meter perhaps, but these are very docile. They're passive. They're not interested in attacking, jumping, biting. Uh, all they want to do is catch prey and uh, eat those prey. Venom probably, most spiders do, but we don't have to worry about them biting us, our children, or our pets. So that risk is minimal. All right, that is some good news there. So this is, they are considered an invasive species. species. Yes. So could they upset the ecosystem in any way? Well, there's the real million dollar question, isn't it? We have several indigenous large orb weavers, the black and yellow garden spider, marbled orb weaver. These are critically important in establishing predator-prey relationships in our landscapes and our natural areas. So the question now is, because they have a tremendous ability to reproduce and spread, will they outcompete or interfere with our native uh, orb weavers? The other good piece of the puzzle here, Nicole, is remember, we've got brown marmorated stink bugs, we've got spotted lantern flies. These are all organisms, invasive pests, that this spider has known for millions of years back in Asia. That's where those things came from. So these may actually help to reduce some of our pest populations. It's okay. simply like Hannibal Lecter having an old friend over for lunch when they encounter a spotted lanternfly. So all it right. may not be all that bad. Bring in the good news, the bug guy, Michael Raup. Thank you so much. We appreciate it.
Always a pleasure. Have a good day. You Look too. after those spiders. They're pretty cool. Oh, I'll be watching out. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.